Taiwan University and uh, Northwestern University. And uh, uh, my name is Yang Chen Liu, and she is doing here, and she is uh, her training exam. Okay. <laughs> okay. So today our topic is detach and adapt, and the cross the and scan go deeper detection. So actually, there are two important terms in our project. The first term is the standard of the representation, and the other term is cross domain data. And this is our uh, today's outline. We will briefly introduce our uh, our uh, process. We will talk about our motivation and our goal, and then we will introduce our proposed method and show some uh, experiments. Okay, let's start from the uh, perspective of human beings. And actually, human can extract characteristics of seasons um, from our own experience. For example, if we see this scene's image, we can actually try to imagine what this looks like in the winter. Okay. 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 So we can just combine uh, from our experience. We know that it, that is uh, the winter should be full of snow, maybe there is no sunlight and white ground, so we can actually combine uh, all the factors in this image and try to uh, generate or imagine another system, another image. And uh, we can actually just try to imagine the flow also. And actually we try uh, the first, so that's we attempt to realize the feasibility of the ship, that is to learn a distinct representation uh, for describing vision data, so that if we have a uh, if we have a generator, we can synthesize the image with different attributes, which means the season in this case. But actually, um, human beings actually have another ability. That is, we can actually uh, extract. For example, if we can extract a season from a photo, we can actually transfer to another domain, such as painting without any supervision. Uh, so human beings can actually transfer this angle ability to other domains without, his, uh, without any guidance from all knowledge. Another obvious example is we can actually distinguish our smile from photos and transfer to the cartoon, cartoon style. So how about the shape? So we try to fulfill this ability of the chip. So we did this project cross the main representation distinguishment. So our goal is that without this provision in time domains, we aim to design a unified framework for cross-domain representation disentanglement. So, okay, uh, it actually, uh, for example, we, uh, if we have a smiling or non-smiling label for each photo in one domain, our first task is to disentangle smile attribute so that we can manipulate the smelling of the photo. And here we consider another domain. Uh, if there's, there is no supervision in this target domain, we try to uh, jack in, in the joint space so that in the target domain, even without any supervision, we can manipulate this sketch. So we, we use this uh, detached and adaptive adapt mechanism to achieve cross domain representation disentanglement. Okay, so we are going to talk about our model. Uh, our model is actually based on GN. So you can see in the figure, here's a G and here's a dispenser right here. So our key, uh, our first goal is try to learn disentangled representation. So how do we uh, achieve this one? That is, we attach a class by on the descriptor. And we try to, uh, so the semantics, the semantic of this angle, okay, sorry. So the semantic of this angle factor and tilde is there from supervised data, real, uh, real data right here. And for for this center, we have two tasks. The first task is uh, just like the original uh, GN. We try to distinguish the real fact data. And the other, the other task is we try to classify.
Okay, so right here we have two different domain state now. So how do we achieve this one? We just defined it, our generator and discounter into high level and low level. Um, so that uh, for the, because we live there, we assume there's a common feature across the main. For example, for example, like the phase of sketch and phase of photo, we have all phase of feature, like nodes uh, or eyes. So we just use the shear high level layers for generator and discounter. And in order to narrow down the domain shift, domain gap, we use different low level um, neural networks to handle these problems. So for, uh, to change this model, we have two major laws. The first law is advanced neural laws. That is, uh, send us the original gen. The other law is this, this angle laws is right here. So we use these two laws to change our model. And also, we try to extend our model to input an uh, image instead of a Gaussian noise. So we add a detection of encoded both uh, extend version so that we can achieve image translation and conditional attribute of interest. So let's talk about our uh, experiments. We have to uh, we have to uh, do four different tasks and apply this model on three different scenarios: the digit, the face, and the scene. The first one is we try to include the Gaussian noise and different distinct factors to try to synthesize cross domain data. So you can see right here, we can just uh, manipulate a smelling attribute to synthesize different uh, data. But even with our supervision, we can also use this model to uh, synthesize different data. Okay. And actually, we can just use the two different, uh, there are actually two different Domain data, uh, the digital data is different. One is NIST, the other one is uh, USPS. Even without any supervision, we can also disable in the uh, supervised domain. Uh, the next test, we try to verify that the single loss is very crucial for our model. So we just alert this parameter, parameter of the single loss from zero to one in this video. So first of all, we do not impose any laws in our chaining laws. So you can see, even even we manipulate our disangled vector, uh, vector, there's no corresponding edge group. But if we just, okay, sorry. the disangled laws they will show different attribute and its corresponding image. So it shows that the disangled law is very crucial for our uh, model. Another task is we try to achieve cross domain image translation. That is maybe we can just into different cross domain data, cross domain image and different disangled factor and synthesize different image. So this road means the influence of, of our model. So we can actually manipulate in in their own domains. Moreover, we can actually trans translate to another domain. Another case is the scene. The source domain is the photo. The target domain is painting. We can actually we can also manipulate the day and night in their own domains. And also we can translate into another domain. And we show that our model can actually do cross domain classification in three different scenarios, the digits, the face, and the scene. And our model can, uh, is actually outperform the state of the art. And 
if you see this uh, figure, you can see that the figure B is that it's colorized with different uh, source and target data. So even without a sufficient entitlement, the blue points can actually uh, classify into correct correct uh, correct class. So uh, in summary, we wrap up our contribution. Well, the first one to learn the cross domain data is the angle distribution for cross domain data. And actually, we propose a framework for adaptation of this angle representation with a single domain supervision. And our model can actually allow uh, us to perform cross domain image translation and cross domain image synthesis and classification. Okay, thank you. I remember that I remember your work, so I have had some questions before. Uh, so I do not really have too much question. One question is: uh, Have you compared your result with Cyclogen? For example, do you think Cyclogen to achieve the uh, the same thing you want to achieve? Uh, I think that is kind of different because Cyclogen to not uh, investigate the representation, right? So that is the uh, that is try to find out the mapping between two different domains. But actually, for another we can actually manipulate and tail down two different domains. So segment is two domains. But in our model, we can actually translate to multiple domains. So that is the difference between our model and the segment.
not know the label right here. So that is the major difference between Stargate and our books. We have no labels in the supervised command. Our supervised command. So yes, that is. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, in the star game, I think they also use some approach to handle the missing label problem. Yeah. I just wondering if you compare your approach with star game, what would be the difference? Just, this is just a comment, you do not have to answer right now. Thank you. Okay. Actually, we do not compare to star game, right now. Yeah. Okay, uh, interesting work. Uh, just a quick, quick question. question. Uh, What's the portions of the label data you, you have been used in order to achieve the result? You mean for the data? Yeah. Okay. What's the portion of the label data you need? Mean? How much percentage uh, actually, of the label data? Actually, in source domain, we have uh, four annotated labels. Four annotated Oh, so 100% source domain. Yeah. Okay, source so source you source have 100% label data in the source domain. Yeah. Oh, okay. For time source domain. Okay, so uh, just uh, a little comment, maybe you can consider as a future extension that uh, maybe uh, this will remind me about uh, the semi supervised game that uh, maybe you can do some semi supervised element also in the source domain. And actually, for future direction, I think a lot of direction that is if we can do Thank you. 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 Thank you.